Afternoons on News Talk 770. That is a thematic song for our next segment, but I do want to just wrap up the last one. I have uh, Calgary. We were talking about health care in the previous segment and what the Canada Health Act does not does not allow us to do. This is from Calgary. The, Calgary health, uh, the Canada Health Act evolved to this current state. When Tommy Douglas brought in health care in Saskatchewan, doctors were allowed to work in outside of the government-sponsored system. And somewhere along the line, that changed. And it gives me some advice about how to go look into that. And I'm, I just may do that because I, I think this is, we have a lot of conceptions of what Tommy Douglas wanted this public health care system to be and not be. And I think that's evolved over time. And I don't know that it's very consistent with what he initially set out to do. But we will continue to return to this topic. I also have... A note from my political grandma, she calls herself. (laughs) She asked me the question about mm, the topics that I choose. And the question that she had, she said, I loved your first week introduction of all the political coverage, but what happened now? It seems to be Friday. Is it management? (laughs) Would like informed coverage segments and open line every day, your old political junkie grandma. Hey, look. I do my best to choose topics that I think you're going to be interested in. I could talk about politics every single day, but when I do talk about politics a lot, I've got a lot of texts that come in and say, hey, you talk about politics too much. So maybe I'm talking about politics too little. It's not management. That's just me. If you don't like any of the content here, you can blame me because I do try to take as much feedback from you about the uh, topics you're interested in, and you can always text me suggestions. I, I think I have tried to do a topic off of, Uh, listener suggestions virtually every time it's been suggested to me so feel free to text me 77770 you can feel free to call me on any call as well i will always defer to people who want to call in and weigh in on a topic just because we're having a good conversation doesn't mean that you can't phone in and be a part of it feel free to do that 403-974-8255 that's 974-TALK um so i i'll try to find a way to be able to build in more talk time with you because I do like to hear the feedback that you have on our topics and guests. So thanks, Political Grandma, for just reminding me that you do still want to hear me talk about politics. And I've got good news for you. We'll be talking about politics now for the next hour because it is Friday. And my political panel is coming up at 2 o'clock. You can tune in to that. We will have two guests that are both from Calgary. Corey Hogan, former Liberal Party strategist, director of engagement strategies at Helen Knowlton as well as Zane Velji, Senior Consultant Engagement Strategies, also at Hill & Knowlton. They'll both be in studio, and we'll be talking about all the developments of the week. But let me switch and talk about a specific development in a specific riding. It's up in Yellowhead. The Libertarian Party Association, in the riding of Yellowhead, mostly rural district members in west-central Alberta, they have a very interesting contest going on. And it's a a tool to help them raise money for their local candidate. Their local candidate, Corey Listing, is giving away a semi-automatic rifle valued at $1,200. Now, Elections Canada, we called them to say, can you actually do this? Because I can, I remember I I got in a little bit of trouble with one of my candidates (laughs) during an election from many years ago where this individual wanted to give away a television for those who came to his events. I don't think it was found to be offside, but people sort of raise their eyebrows. Is this considered an inducement if somebody is offered the ability to win a prize for supporting a particular candidate? Now, Elections Canada says that the Elections Act only addresses the contribution aspect of this case. So the value of the donated prize and the ticket's purchased which constitute contributions to the party so what that means that is that as long as the contributions are properly reported elections canada says no problem it complies with the elections law so i wanted to get the legality out of it uh, out of the way before i introduce my next guest to tell us all how it works and why he's doing it Corey listing libertarian candidate for yellowhead joins me now Corey, thanks for being on the line yeah, thanks, Daniel. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. So we'll talk about your the reason why you decided to put your name forward in, as a candidate in a bit. But I find this 
giveaway that you're doing really interesting. So tell us, first of all, where you got the idea for it, and tell us a little bit about the gun, just in case there are, are others who are interested in helping you out. Well, basically, I got the idea for it when uh, when somebody offered the, the item up uh, as a donation so that I could raise funds. So um, a gentleman named Jay, uh, Jeff Hussey, he, uh, I, I was in contact with him through some other things I was doing this summer, and he said that he'd be willing to donate a personal item, which was this uh, this AR-15, to my uh, EDA or the EDA I sit on, and uh, to help me raise funds. So, of course, I, the first phone call was to Elections Canada to find out if uh, if it was in fact something that was legal. Uh, they all raised their eyebrows and said, "Well." It's never been done, but there's no rules against it, so I uh, went ahead with it. So tell us a bit more, for those who aren't as familiar with what an AR-15 is, tell us a little bit about this firearm. Well, the AR platform was designed by a company called Armalite Arms, and uh, the AR-15 was uh, first designed as a a hunting rifle that could be transformed with different barrels and different things, so that if you wanted to go hunt deer, you could put like a three hundred eight barrel on it. Or if you wanted to go hunt gophers the next day, you could put a 22, uh, .22-250 or a two two three, a smaller caliber uh, barrel on it, and that way one firearm would do more than one thing. Um, what most people think of an AR-15 is the military-style rifles, which was the M16 and the machine guns, and those came after. Okay. Uh, they were picked up by the military when they found that they were light and uh, really easy to, uh, to maintain. So this is not a military or an assault rifle? Uh, lots of people will consider it an assault rifle, but there is no such classification of firearm. Okay. I want to go through the details of how anyone might be able to enter this contest, but I have to take a quick break right now. I'm talking with Corey Listing, the Libertarian candidate for Yellowhead, about the raffle that he's having, a giveaway of an AR-15 rifle. If you want to weigh in on this, want to find out more about it, you can. You can text me at 77770, but we'll talk about the details of how you can enter the contest when we get back after this on News Talk 770. But his mother cried as he walked out. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. And welcome back to Afternoons on News Talk 770. So one of our listeners points out to me that an AR-15 is what all the rappers talk about. I do listen to some rap music. Don't listen to all of it. So clearly, the, this, uh, as our, our guest, Corey Listing, has, has told us, Libertarian candidate for Yellowhead, th- this has been considered a an assault rifle. However, there are, of course, hunting uses for it as well. And he, he explained that just before the break. We uh, also have a, a questioner asking this. Doesn't this violate Canadian gun laws? Don't you have to go through a screening process to be able to own a firearm in Canada? So we did talk about how Elections Canada says that this does not violate elections laws. But I think that, uh, Corey, you've taken some steps to make sure that you're also in compliance with the gun laws as well. You've got uh, a closed eligibility. Why don't you go through some of the requirements for anybody who wants to participate in this giveaway? Well, this, of course, is a restricted firearm. So it, it, it sits in the same class as, uh, as a handgun. So the only time you can use it is on a range or at a competition, a registered competition, and you also have to have a restricted license. So before it can be legally transferred, you actually, um, you, even if you win, you have to prove that you have this restricted power before it can be transferred to you, and it can't be shipped to you until it has been transferred to you. So I have a regular PAL. My husband has the restricted PAL. I would not be able to enter the contest, but he would. You'd be able to enter. Uh, 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 you'd be able to enter the contest, um, but you wouldn't be able to win it. Okay. So. Because um, there's no way for me to know that you have a pal until after we go to confirming it. Cause okay. That's that's personal information, and I'm not going to ask for that until until uh, until until it's needed, right? So anyone can enter the contest, but in order to be able to claim the prize, you have to be giving it to somebody who has the valid firearms license. And you, right. as you yeah. said, it's a, a possession a possession acquisition license, but with the restricted provision right. on it. It would be the same as selling the firearm to somebody, except for we're just basically giving it to them. Uh, in, in order to transfer, uh, transfer it to their name, they have to have a restricted PAL. Okay. Now, you can get a, a restricted PAL under the age of 18, can't you? Or do you also have to be over the age of 18? Because that's one of your other restrictions, that participants must be 18 years of age or older at the time of entry. Why do you have that in there? The restrictions for, uh, under, uh, for 18 years and, and older is that uh, um, we found it somewhere in the Elections Act that people under 18 can't vote, so therefore they can't uh, support a political... Oh. Uh, organization. Makes sense. Also, 
cannot accept corporation donations under Elections Canada rules as well. So any donations have to be done in the name of the individual as well, correct? That's right, yes. All right. Uh, also, you say the contest is open only to legal residents of Canada. What? Uh, why do you have that restriction? Well, that's another Elections Canada rule. Uh, you, uh, people from outside of, outside of Canada cannot uh, donate to a campaign or an EDA or a party. Okay. Is there any other eligibility restrictions that I missed that we need to make sure people are aware of? Uh, as far as I know, that's all there is. Okay. Um, we just got to make sure, have to make sure that they're of the proper voting age because you can't uh, donate unless you're voting age. You have to be a Canadian, and uh, and you have to have uh, in order to claim the prize, you have to have a valid PAL. Okay, so let's talk about how to enter. <laughs> okay, uh, that's the easy part. You go to uh, www.yellowheadlibertarian.ca. Yep. And on the donations tab. There is an, another tab when you co- cover the donations tab that says contest rules. All of the contest rules are in that tab, as well as the donation limits that are allowed for, for, for Elections Canada. So let's and, go through uh, some of those. So you can make a $20 donation to the Yellowhead Libertarian Association through that website, www.yellowheadlibertarian.ca. Yep. And for every $20 donation you give, you get one opportunity to win. That's but right. you also say that if you give a $100 donation, you get 10 entries in the giveaway. That's right. And, that there, and, and the, the limit to that is uh, Elections Canada will only allow up to $1,500 individual to uh, to donate. So if you gave a $1,500 donation, then that would mean that you could have your name in the draw 150 times. That's right. All right. So give us some idea, because I think what it does also point out here, oh, we should also mention this as well, because this is important. Um, what I would have been concerned about is if the giveaway happened before the election, people might think that you, receiving a $1,200 prize was some inducement to vote for you. But you've uh, handled that off for me by saying that the draw is going to take place the day after, on October 20th, 2015, at 4 p.m. Yes. At the Yellowhead Libertarian Association office. Did you do that on purpose, have it after the, the election? Yeah, I did do that on purpose. I, um, I, was, I was thinking about a short uh, a short. Uh, run, but then I decided that I may as well make it longer. Um, I was going to carry on for even longer after that, but it just seemed like uh, a couple of months was going to be lots enough to have this particular draw, and then hopefully I can find something else to uh, to uh, continue to keep the EDA active in the community. Okay, you got to tell me how I can tell you something like this might go over like a lead balloon in Calgary or Edmonton. Uh, urban sensibilities are a little bit different <laughs> than in rural, and I live in a rural area, so I understand that. But what kind of pickup are you getting in your area? Uh, it's, it's been pretty good. Uh, uh, there's, there's people that are afraid to donate because they don't want to split the vote. You know, we got the vote splitting thing, and there's also uh, there's also people that aren't very happy with the idea. But part of the part of it is is we want to change the way people view firearms because law-abiding firearms owners are no threat to anyone. Um, it's it's statistically shown. It's uh, it's also shown that the more uh, legally owned firearms you have in an area, the less your violent crime rate is. Um, so part of this is it isn't just to raise funds. Like it's an incredible opportunity for me to to put this out there and say, hey, this is not dangerous to you if it's owned properly. Are you getting some pushback, though? I know that there are a lot of, obviously, those who are law-abiding uh, firearms owners, those who are hunters, those who are target shooters, they're going to get that. But there are also those who are just a little bit squeamish about guns for a lot of reasons. And do you, are you getting any pushback from them? Yes, definitely. And actually, I welcome the conversation because... Um, most of the most of the people that are squeamish about firearms don't understand that uh, the firearm doesn't cause the problem. It's the person that's the, 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 that you're dealing with. Is, is this the reason why you decided to put your name forward as a libertarian candidate because of how you feel about about firearms and firearms owners' rights? It's one of them. Um, uh, property rights and firearms rights are, are were definitely on, on the high end of my list when I first got involved in politics. It's since then it's opened up to everything else as well that the libertarians stand for, but. That was that was kind of where I was found, as I was uh, an advocate and uh, and uh, very uh, vocal on the on the pages uh, on the Facebook firearms pages and stuff about what our rights could and should be and and uh, and how to try to uh, educate people that firearms aren't dangerous unless they're in criminal hands. Well, I, you also had a really interesting 
um, interview with one of the local papers up there, and, I, and they point out something which I've always found interesting about libertarianism and libertarian candidates, is it's hard to place you on the spectrum of being left or right, because there are a lot of ideas that li- the Libertarian Party proposes, like uh, legalization of pot, uh, relaxed laws on prostitution, not criminalizing these areas that call, fall into vice, but you're also opposed to military intervention and fighting ISIS. So that, that sort of puts you as a, a left-wing type of candidate. But then, of course, uh, because you support small government, low taxes, and the right to bear arms, that, that would tend to put you on the, on the right of the political spectrum. How, how do you define where you stand as a libertarian? Well, we, we've, we've found out that there's a three-dimensional way to politics. Like, uh, we, we see politics, or we always have. I always considered myself uh, a conservative growing up and, and as, a, as, a, as a young man. But I, there was always portions of the other side that I, that I liked. And, and most of it was if you could take freedom and put freedom into everything, uh, pretty much everybody has the right idea uh, to, one, to one stance or another. We're just on the opposite spectrum. We're, we, we go from left to right but we are on the libertarian side and not the totalitarian side. Well, thank you so much for this provocative discussion. I'm, I've got a couple of folks who have uh, weighed in on the on the debate. I'll say one more time uh, after the break how people can participate in your in your contest. And thanks for coming on the show to talk about some of the, the ideas that you're trying to raise during this election campaign. Well, and thanks for having me. And any time, you, uh, you know, you got my number now. You bet. Thanks. That's Corey Listing, Libertarian candidate for Yellowhead. And I'll tell you again the details if you want to participate in his giveaway for an AR-15 rifle. Stay with me. We'll be back in a couple minutes on News Talk 770. Hey, hey, Mom said the way you move going to make you sweat, going to make you groove. And welcome back to Afternoons on News Talk 770. Just wrapping up from that last segment, if you want to go to Corey's website, it's www.yellowheadlibertarian.ca. I have just been told, however, from one of our listeners that just a heads up going to Corey's website, mobile browsers on Android seem a bit fussy with the website, so it's best viewed on a desktop if you're interested in participating in this contest. I also have someone asking the question, don't you need a lottery license as well? wonder how that worked for a gun and a political party. It, uh, I guess we'll find out. It appears to me that since it's under the auspices of the, of the election, the general election federally, it's Elections Alberta that is managing this in our federal gun laws. But no doubt if they're violating a provincial law when it comes to lotteries, that will be discovered very shortly. Also, from, this from Calgary, pistol permit is not required. Watch Yukon men, men. They all have ARs, and uh, I don't know the answer to that, but it does sound like you have to have a restricted permit if you're going to be able to participate in this contest. You can participate, but you just can't claim the prize. So, again, if you want to check it out, www.yellowheadlibertarian.ca. We are going to continue talking about politics and the Developments of the week on the federal level with Corey Hogan and Zane Velji, both of Hill and Knowlton Strategies, both really smart guys. They join me after the news at the top of the hour. Stay with me on News Talk 770.